This is OG TV News. I am Tuji Akintayo. Thanks for joining us. On the news, INEC releases final list of candidates for 2019 elections. Nigeria Brazil collaborate to boost agriculture. Car bomb kills five people in Colombia. Write it on your heart that every day is the best day in the year. Central Bank of Nigeria unveils new policy on financial inclusion. That will be on business segment of the news. Until then, stay tuned. I am Ido Fabadu. Another sports segment of the news. Gunmen kill football bribes Ghanaian investigating journalists. This and many more when I return on the sports segment of the news. My name, Hakim Akitunde. You are welcome. Now the news in full. The Independent National Electoral Commission has released the final list of candidates eligible to participate in the 2019 general elections. The list contains the names of candidates for the Presidential, Senatorial, House of Representatives and State Assemblies. The Presidential Candidates List features 144 names comprising parties' presidential candidates and their running mates. There are 28 women on the list as either the candidate or the running mate. Recently, the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC says no voter will be allowed to vote with a temporary voter card in the forthcoming general elections, hence the need for the extension of the collection of the permanent voter cards nationwide. Ido Ufabajo, who went around some words in Abelkuta Metropolis, reported that majority of the places visited recorded low turnout of eligible voters. His report. In order to ensure that all eligible voters exercise their franchise in the forthcoming general elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has commenced the second phase of the collection of permanent voter cards across the country. For those people that are registered in 2011 and were unable to vote in 2015 because we have some people that are having problems with their PVCs, omitted. So we call them short vein uh, PVCs. We want to tell them that their cards are already in large numbers now. And those people that are registered in 2017, 2018, almost all the cards, we have them. So as we speak now, we are at the world level, the 236 uh, registration areas we have in the state. So we have been issuing out the cards. Uh, the collection of this PVC will be ongoing until a week to election day. OTTV News roved round different wards in Abel Guta Metropolis and observed that eligible voters took out to collect their cards with the hope of participating in the elections while some wards witnessed low turnout of people. I did it last year, August, and they told me to check back in November. I went to check out the anniversary. They said I should come again, and I got there this morning. They said I should come to Reverend Kute here, and thank God I got here. I'm able to get it within 30 minutes, or let's say 45 minutes. I'm very happy. Distribution of permanent voter cards, PVCs, to registered voters is ongoing all over the country with a call on stakeholders to sensitize their members as INEC staff would visit various electoral wards between January 16 and January 21 to distribute the PVCs to eligible voters as February 8 is the last day for the distribution exercise. Ido Fabadu, OG to the News. Allied People's Movement in Ogun State has projected people-oriented programs that will improve the socio-economic status of residents. The party's gubernatorial candidate in the state, Honorable Adekunle Abdukabur Rakinlade, stated this while addressing party faithful at the Kenya local government area. Peter Falomo has more. 
In continuation of its campaign tour across Ogun State, the Allied People's Movement campaign train moved across the 10 wards in the Kenya local government area with Ogiri Ward 6 and 7 as the first station to visit. In its address, Ogun State Allied People's Movement gubernatorial candidate, Honorable Adekunle Abdukabri Akinlade, speaks on the sustaining the rebuilding mission of small and medium scale enterprises, adding that the sector has great impact on the economy. <laughs> The people share their opinion on the capability of APM governorship candidates. He has a vision. If he doesn't have a vision, there's nothing he can do. But he has a vision to lead the state. Senator Ibikuda Mosu had laid a solid foundation for continuity. And, and we believe very much in him. I think that there is our man, any time, any day. His programs are good. And we believe we can deliver. At a visit to Alakweros Palace, Honorable Akinlade assures the royal father, Oba Ido Basibo, to improve on infrastructure across Ogun West Senatorial District. <laughs> Oba Akinyemi Omosanya charges Honorable Akinlade not to deviate from promises made when it gets to the seat of authority. Party members at the Peru Wards 1, 2, and 3 welcomed their gubernatorial flag bearer with open arms. The governorship candidates, Honorable Akinlade, assured party loyalists at Irulu and Elysian of all inclusive administration of APM in the next dispensation of governance in Ogun State. At a Kenya Mega Rally, Triple A, as popularly called, reminds the people not to toy with power of PVC, hence the need to possess it and vote rightly. The APM campaign train moves to another council area, Peter Falomo, OGTV News. The candidate of the Allied People's Movement, APM, for the Ogun State House of Assembly, Odobolu State Constituency, in the 2019 general elections, Otumba Dayo Adenaye, has assured the people of his constituency of more democratic dividends if given the mandate. He gave the assurance during his campaign tour to AGN Ward 11 and Odobolu Ward 5. Yusuf Ganeyu reports. The campaign tour of Allied People's Movement candidate for the Ogun State House of Assembly Odobolu State constituency, Otumba Dayo Adeneye, took him to AGN Ward 11 and Odobolu Ward 5 where he solicited the support of electorate in the forthcoming election. <laughs> Otumba Dayo Adeneye also visited Odobolu Ward 5, where he called on eligible voters to vote for all APM candidates during election. <laughs> 
The people describe Otumba Dayuadineye as tested and trusted for the job. We are going to vote for him. The whole body level. We are going to vote massively for Dayuadineye. He has always been there for us. Call him. Come rain, come sunshine. This one is the man. He deserves to have this glory and this honor. Am I giving my word? Come March 2nd, without being told, he will see everything. Well, I've been seeing his citizen that I know is somebody we can reckon with. And that has been the reason why we are telling our people from the Golu State constituency to come out and vote massi uh, massively for our honorable. Otumba Dayuadineye says people oriented programs and youth development, among others, will be made available if elected into office. So when you vote for Akinlade, you vote for Triple A, you vote for Kweju Adebajo, you vote for Dayo Adeneye, and all APM candidates, you are voting to sustain the mission to rebuild Ogun State. So there will be continuity. All the good things that we've been enjoying for the past seven and a half years, going on eight years, will be continued by the next administration, led by the incoming governor, by the special grace governor, inshallah, Honorable Adekunle Akinlade, Triple A. The team is expected to visit other wards in the constituency. Yusuf Ganiyu. OGTV News. Ekiti State House of Assembly has removed the Deputy Speaker, Mr. Shegun Adewumi, for alleged gross misconduct. Adewumi, Ekiti West constituency in the Assembly, was elected on the 6th of June 2015 as the number two man in the Assembly. He was removed in 2018 by pro Ayodele Fayoshe lawmakers for alleged disloyalty. The assembly accused Adewumi of committing several acts, including personal conducts likely to bring the assembly to dispute, obvious threat to peace of members, and obstruction of constitutional functions of the House. He was also accused of dereliction, desertion, abscondment, and abandonment of constitutional vested responsibilities of the office of the Deputy Speaker. Ogun State Head of Service, Engineer Larry Bisiriu, has urged Nigeria Labour Congress leaders to see themselves as partners in progress with government and always explore dialogue rather than confrontation while making demands. Engineer Bisiriu stated this during a court visit of the Academic Staff Union of Secondary Schools Ogun State Chapter to his office at Okemoson Abeokuta. The Academic Staff Union Chairman, Comrade Akim Lassisi, commended the efforts of the Senator Ibikunle Amosun led administration for consistently allotting over 20% of the state annual budget to the education sector, describing it as laudable. The head of service in his response commended the peaceful disposition of the union over the years, urging it to continue to support the various developmental policies and programs for sustained upliftment of the education sector. I have noted a lot of requests from the Super General, etc., etc. But I must say that I'm sure that we are, we are still going to have a very good forum where we we'll take issue by one, one by one and we will see the possibility of ensuring that we are able to harmonize things between the union and government to ensure that at least whatever thing that will come up will be acceptable for the parties. The number one civil servant promised the teachers union of his support in the efforts to better the lot of the teaching profession, which he described as the molder of our future leaders. And still to come in the news, Nigeria-Brazil enter partnership to boost agriculture. More news and reports after this break.
Davos welcome back. The massive show of support for Senator Ibikunle Amusu to represent Ogun Central Senatorial District at the upper chamber is informed by the total commitment and passion for development and genuine love for the people practically demonstrated in the governance of Ogun State in the last eight years. This was made known by the people of Odeda local government in continuation of Governor Amosun's campaign for Ogun Central Senatorial seat and re-election of President Muhammad Buhari in the council area. Odeda is the third largest local government in Ogun Central with mostly rural communities and at the same time politically strategic with high level of political consciousness as almost everyone in the city has a root in this border local government with Oyo State. Governor Amosun assured an, approve, an approval for quality representation will bring soccer to them. To show their support and approval for quality representation at the Red Chamber by the Governor, the people of Opeji came out in their large number to welcome him. The APC senatorial candidate also spoke on the support being enjoyed from the people. The Governor was also received at Bodi Olude, Alabata and Ilugu. President Muhammadu Buhari will on Saturday inaugurate the new Barrow River port in Niger State, which has just been completed by the federal government. Mr. Tai of Adile, general manager in charge of Corporate Affairs, National Inland Waterways Authority, made this known in Lokoja. Fadile said that the port was built by CGCC Global Project Nigeria Limited. According to him, the new port is fitted with a mobile harbor crane, transit shed, and an administrative block, water hydrant system, water generating plant, rich stacker, a 100 kilowatt power generating set, and three forklifts of various tonnages, among others. Baru port, built to support the dredging of the Lower River Niger project, is expected to create at least 2,000 direct jobs and hundreds of thousands of indirect jobs. He said the National Inland Waterways Authority had started upgrading the road network linking the port. President Muhammadu Buhari says his interest in seeking re-election is to secure Nigeria and build a united nation that everyone can be proud of. The president at the APC presidential rally held in Delta State assured the people of more developmental projects if re-elected. It is the second visit by the APC presidential campaign team to the south-south region of the country after the inaugural campaign held in Akwa Ibom State. President Muhammad Buhari said his last campaign message is in 2015 that led to his victory and is still relevant in view of his administration's efforts in increasing an enabling environment for a stable nation where socio-economic activities will thrive. The president acknowledged the huge mineral potentials of the nation domiciled in Delta and the South-South, adding that efforts by the government at tackling corruption is aimed at securing those resources and using them appropriately for the good of the people. Leadership, our interest is to serve Nigeria to get Nigerians to live together and work for our nation. God has blessed us with people and resources. Let us realize it and thank God and work together to build our country. I assure you, the fundamental objectives we have identified and campaigned on in 2015 are still relevant. The country has to be secured, to be properly managed. And properly management means doing well in the economy. We have young population, most of them unemployed. This is of great concern. We have turned to agriculture and industries. The rally was well attended by party faithful from within and around the country.
President Muhammad Buhari has conveyed deepest condolences to the Issa family following the death of Nigeria's ambassador to Cote d'Ivoire, Ambassador Ibrahim Issa. President Buhari described the death of Ambassador Issa as a painful loss to the country, recounting the professionalism and dedication of the late ambassador during his tour of duty to the West African country. President Muhammad Buhari also expressed sadness over the demise of Abu Jalil Suleiman, the recently appointed Director General of the Directorate of Technical Cooperation in Africa, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Joint Development Commission. In a condolence message to the family of Suleiman, the Foreign Minister, officials in the ministry, the government, and the people of Kano State, President Buhari in the statement said the death of Ambassador Suleiman has, has deprived the nation of one of its finest foreign service officials. He said the nation will not forget the invaluable contributions of the deceased ambassador in advancing Nigeria's foreign policy, culminating in renewable improvements achieved in the international arena in the, air, in the three and a half years of his administration. He prayed to Allah for the repose of the soul of the departed foreign service officials and that God will grant them fortitude to bear their losses. The federal government, in partnership with the government of Brazil, launched an agricultural initiative aimed at boosting agricultural production in Nigeria. Vice President Yemi Oshibaju launched the program, which is geared towards introducing advanced Brazilian equipment, as well as establishment of training centers for Nigerian farmers across the country. The Green Imperative is a Brazilian model that drives Brazilian agricultural productivity through mechanism and the use of heavy duty equipment in the production and processing of farm produce. Farm produce. Nigeria is to key into the program with a view to complementing the green alternative policy being implemented by the federal government. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibaju said, the focus of government is not only to boost food production, but to also create job opportunity for the young unemployed youths in the country. Capacity and training will occur to the local assembly of tractors and other agricultural machine and processing uh, other agricultural machines. And then we're also going to have processing centers where agro-processing will be done. Of course, the major dividend of all of this are the hundreds of thousands of quality jobs that young men and women will be able to access. We estimate that we could train around 100,000 young Nigerians under the Empower Agro Youth Program. Brazilian companies will export parts of 10,000 tractors and 50,000 machines and equipment. The program, which will be jointly executed by Nigeria and Brazil, is described as the biggest investment in Africa, and it is expected to attract $1.1 billion in the country. Under this scheme, those of you who benefit from them, utilize them well. There will be spare parts, produce, market, repay the loans under which this scheme is going to be put together. Its implementation will be purely private sector led in all of its operations, including the assembly of the machineries and implements, the operation of the service centers, and the agro processing centers. The project will be implemented in all of the 774 local governments of Nigeria. Nigeria is also making a move to key into the more food program of Brazil, designed to address rural poverty through food production and processing. Minister of Labor and Pro Employment, Chris Ngege, says discussion on the new minimum wage for workers in the country is a work in progress. Chris Ngige said this while briefing journalists at the State House Abuja after the National Executive Council meeting. The information minister told you the other day after the Federal Executive Council. We are taking our deliberations to National Economic Council and then we close up uh, on uh, 22nd at the National Council of State. 
after that to we'll be able to say what we're doing. Uh, figure, frequency of review, uh, those that uh, have exemptions, and everything about the deal so that uh, uh, people will know. Because by then, we're ready to transmit to the National Assembly. In consonance with uh, our agreement with uh, Labour, that will transmit the new bill on or before 23rd of January. Many have said that the governor's. The governor of Kebi State, Abubakar Abagudu, spoke on behalf of the Nigeria Governors Forum. The Nigerian Governors Forum uh, have six members in the tripartite committee which was set up by Mr. President and I happen to be one of the governors and the attitude of the governors and the committee was for evolving a national minimum wage leg legislation that can work and what today yes there was a, a discussion but uh, that discussion is not for uh, for me to say because the chairman of NEC has been mandated to talk about it. But I think uh, um, to answer your question, yes, there was a, the, the minister. The vice president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, presided over the National Executive Council meeting meant to deliberate on the new minimum wage as demanded by the organized labor. Ogun State Governor, Senator Ibikunle Amusun, was represented by his deputy, Chief Mrs. Yetunde Onanuga. The federal government has been advised to allow the National Judicial Commission, NJC, take charge of the case of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onogen, with Code of Conduct Tribunal. Discussants on an OGTV current affairs program, Democratic Path, Barrister Benjamin Ugumodede and Barrister Kayode Adiremi, while speaking on the topic, issues of non-declaration of assets, called for due process in dealing with the situation. Due process, cool down. They have gotten their facts, and what we are saying is that this issue is said over a year. They have been watching, mm. and if they now got their facts, they must not be too much in a hurry or in a haste. They must follow due process. If they have taken this man through the normal procedure, may there be no noise and use and cries. Really? No. So I'm not saying that you should be left alone no, because the CJ. No, 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 no. For the normal route. Because if this is done, there's something called precedence. Once it is done like this, then it will be easier to replicate wrong things in the country. And it hap it's happening to him today. Who knows, what, who knows who's next, really? So it needs to be checked. They submitted that the Chief Justice of Nigeria is innocent of the allegation until proven otherwise, urging the federal government to extend its fight on corruption to former and serving nation's executive officers and president. As part of its corporate social responsibilities, the International Bureau's PLC has donated boreholes to the primary health centers at Owodi Egba and Lugbara communities in Obafemi Owodi local government area of Ogun State. Elizabeth Esson witnessed the commissioning exercise and now reports. Less than six months that the International Bureau's PLC came into Ogun State, it has begun to identify the needs of the adjoining communities and attending to them. In actualization of this, solar-powered motorized boroughs were donated by the company to Prami Earth Center, Owodi Egba, and Logbara Community, all in Obafemi Owodi local government area, by the International Bureau's PLC, as part of its corporate social responsibilities. We believe that um, we must you know do some great things for communities where we do business so despite the fact that we are yet to even put together an account for the year we have to take money from other parts of the breweries that we operate and say look let's do some community projects but we know the the requirements of the people we know the need for these social amenities since the establishment of the company in the state it has been enjoying business friendly environments
Ogun State has, is business friendly. Osho State, where we are being, has been very business friendly also. Um, we're just four months here, but so far it has been fantastic. There has been no troubles, and uh, we hope it remains that way. The beneficiaries of the project commend the efforts of International Bureau's PLC. The long hope of expectation was surveyed by International Bureau's, a company that saw the need for its donation and which initiated and completed the project on time. Today, in fact, we are grateful. In fact, uh, our happiness is immeasurable. The facilities, according to the end users, will be optimally utilized and taken care of. Elizabeth S. OGTV News. Ogun State Commissioner of Police Ahmed Yasu has vowed to deal decisively with any criminal or individual who may want to foment trouble in the coming general elections in accordance with the provisions of the law. He made the vow during the inauguration of the upgraded Enugada police post to a divisional headquarters. Ido Ufabajo reported that the initiative was facilitated by the State Police Community Relations Committee. Members of Police Community Relations Committee, Ogun State, converged for the commissioning of Enugada Police Divisional Headquarters and presentation of awards to some of their active members. Chairman PCRC Enugada Berkuta Chief Mrs. Adijat Sanyaulu in our speech says Enugada Police Station is number two foremost police station established in Abeokuta by the colonial masters, hence the need for the upgrade. I'm using this opportunity to inform this gathering that Enugada PCRC, we have an architectural structure of what, of what we want this station to look like in the nearest future. And we are going to work directly towards achieving it by the grace of God until we get to promised land by bringing Christ to level in our community. After presentation of various awards, the Commissioner of Police in the state, Ahmed Iliasu, proceeded to the commissioning of the division. God bless all of you. Amen. The significance of this particular division is meant to increase the safety and security of this area. It's part of those divisions created when additional area commands are created. And it shows to you the acceptance of community policy here. People have trust and confidence in the police they have. You can only police a community through public engagement, and that is what we are doing here. The police boss charges parents and guardians to nurture their words as thuggery will not be tolerated in the state, especially in the coming general elections. Within this period of uh, electioneering campaign and other things, is to talk to their wards, to talk to their children, to shun thuggery and hooliganism, to shock vandalism of any kind. We are, we are, we are, we are apolitical, non-partisan, we are playing a seamless level playing ground, we are equitable and just to everybody, and we will not tolerate any act of violence. We will clamp down on any person or group of people who are trying to uh, uh, bring violence, new trend into the, com into the community. The state PCRC chairman, al Aji Ibrahim Olani, urged other communities not to leave the business of security into the hands of government alone, saying that the idea of the divisional station came into being as a result of commissioners' intervention with the community. Ito Fabaju, UJ TV News. The Nigerian army has said that its troops foiled an infiltration by Boko Haram fighters in Gajiram community. According to a statement by spokesman Colonel Oyama Nwachuku, the terrorists were trying to take over the community but were repelled by its gallant operatives. Colonel Nwachuku's communique further noted that some of the jihadists were killed in the encounter and some items were recovered. The troops recovered one AK-47 rifle, two AK-47 magazines, one rocket-propelled grenade tube, two rocket-propelled grenade bombs, four chargers, light machine gun belt links. The gallant troops are currently on the trail of some terrorists who survived and fled the scene of the encounter. The insurance industry, from all indications, 
plays a vital role towards the development of the Nigerian economy as well as in the area of risk management. Hence, the need to enlighten the masses on the necessities of ensuring one's life, properties, assets, and children's future. Ifeshulu Ade in this report takes a look at the benefit, assets, and policies involved in ensuring one's property. His report is presented in this package. Insurance can be seen as a form of arrangement a person, company, or the state undertakes to provide a guarantee of compensation for specified loss, damage, illness, or death in return for payment of a specified premium. Basically, there are four types of insurance policies, namely health, life, property, and auto insurance. But there are also pet insurance, travel insurance, trade credit insurance to mention a few. You are the one paying tax. All your tax is heavy. All you need to do is, one, since you have the policy with us, there is what we call policy document. Inside that policy document, you will see there. So your tax will be reduced. Insurance will make it to be reduced. Why your employer will pay like 7.5% of the tax you are paying. Insurance companies are meant to be um, uh, trustees. Uh, they are collecting other people's money and keeping other people's money for them. They are under constant inspection and reporting requirement to the regulatory body to ensure that the industry is safe and sound at all times. Some experts speak on the risks involved in insurance. The risk that face insurance uh, or anybody that takes insurance is just like a um, business risk. If you take insurance, for instance, and um, there's a failure, there's a business failure from uh, the, the organization that offers that insurance, of course, that policy is imperiled. And if it is imperiled, there's nothing you can do. What are the ways of tackling it? I want people out there to know that insurance will stick to our promise and we promise not to fail you. And if there is any observation, at least just for free, walk into an insurance company and present your case. If insurance is encouraged and um, everybody is made to take insurance, it has to do with the pool of funds. These funds are made available um, from an aspect where it is not immediately needed to where it is needed. Well, you know, and uh, such funds are used for the common, common good. Development of road, building of hospital, building of schools, and um, uh, the the cumulative effect of it is that there is a general good to the to the society. The Nigerian insurance penetration record at 0.4 percent is one of the lowest in Africa, meaning only one percent of the population owns any form of insurance policy. Some residents share their opinions. Mm, I have plan, but I've not joined any because. No, none of them has come here or they've come to interview us or tell us about insurance. I know about insurance. I have car insurance. I insure my car. I pay every year. It should be noted that since its penetration in the year 1921, insurance in Nigeria has remained stagnant and therefore requires positive consideration in order to manage unforeseen risks. It was Senkomium Galore as the coordinator of Ogun State School Net Southwest Resource Center, Mr. Olatunji Akoni, as a bows out of service after 35 years of meritorial service in the state civil service. The event was well attended by dignitaries at Southwest Resource Center, Okemoson Abelkuta. Life is not how far, but how well. For this young man, the outgoing coordinator of Ogun State School Net Southwest Resort Center, Mr. Onlatunji Akoni, reaching the mandatory 35 years in the state civil service, it is now time to retire. Blessings of mind with 10,000 pieces. We should be conscious of a day like this, because whether we like it or not, it will come. Special advisor to the government on ICT, Mr. Bumi Adebayo and former head of service in the state, Elder Shola Adeyemi, reflects that Mr. Akoni has made meaningful impact to the state civil service, especially in the area of academics and ICT. He's been a very good resource, a knowledge base, and hardly do you need any information that is not readily available through him. So it's the passion that he has 
for the profession. And by God's grace, I want to pray more for more strength. The general manager, Gateway ICT Limited, Mrs. Irene Ayoinde, and others at the event described Mr. Olatunji Akoni as a diligent officer whose mindset is positive to the growth and development of the service. It's a very hardworking person. It's somebody that's um, very intelligent and uh, very accommodating. So it's a nice person to work with. I found him to be a very hardworking, diligent, thorough, has uh, paid attention to details. Mr. Akoni. In his response, appreciate all for their support. It has been hectic, but we thank God that God has actually sustained me. I thank God because uh, during my service here, it has taken Ogu State to the highest uh, uh, pedestrian in the, in, 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 in the area of ICT. I want to thank the governor of the state, uh, Senator Bifuli Amoso, for uh, giving us the opportunity and an enabling environment to, to work here. Mr. Olatunji Akoni joined the service of the state in 1995 and he was appointed by the state government in 2004 as the coordinator of Ogunskunet Southwest Resort Center, Abeokuta. Yusuf Ganiyu, OGTV News. You are watching OGTV News. Up next is the business segment after this time out. Stay with us. You're welcome to the business segment of the news and let's begin with the Central Bank of Nigeria who has unveiled the National Financial Inclusion Strategy designed to ensure that at least 80% of Nigerians have access to banking and other financial services. The CBN Deputy Governor on Financial System Stability, Mrs. Aisha Ahmad, who met the presentation said the Apex Bank had also released new policy frameworks on consumer protection, financial literacy and financial education. Amat said the CBN recently introduced regulations and guidelines for the licensing and operations of payment service banks in furtherance of its efforts to leverage technology to enhance access to financial services for the unbanked. Meanwhile, Central Bank of Nigeria has expressed its commitment to improve credit allocation in the economy. The Apex Bank stated this, that this was part of its long-term strategy for strengthening the Nigeria economy. According to the CBN, it has established initiatives to resolve the un underlying challenges to long-term gross domestic product economic productivity, unemployment, and poverty that have pervaded the economy over the past decades. The CBN governor, Godwin Emifili, had earlier stated, we believe these measures will help to instill a stronger credit culture and unlock access to finance for deserving Nigerians, including those who may not have fixed assets to provide the banks as collateral. Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, has directed electricity distribution companies this course to conduct and complete the enumeration of customers of meter in their various franchise areas by March 31st, 2019. It said these would help improve access to meters and help the discourse promptly attend to electricity issues. The Regulatory Commission, in a statement published on its website, also urged customers to cooperate with the discourse during the exercise, as this was in their best interest. In 2016, the discourse conducted massive enumeration of unmetered customers with a view to supplying meters, thus facing out the controversial estimated billings. However, two years after majority of enumerated customers are still without meters, this discourse blamed lack of funds to procure meters for the increasing customer base. 
Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation says it has blocked leakages in the country's oil and gas downstream sector valued at $1 billion, 307 billion naira at the official exchange rate of 307 naira to a dollar per annum. The corporation said the leakages were blocked in the business operations conducted in Nigeria's downstream oil sector, adding that this has made it possible for the country to save about $1 billion. The downstream sector of the oil and gas industry deals with the refining of crude oil and the processing and purifying of raw natural gas, as well as the marketing and distribution of products derived from crude oil and natural gas. The oil firm also stated that it had made significant efforts in debt recovery from traders indebted to the corporation through reconciliations, payments of settles where, where necessary, and had reviewed credit policies to protect revenues. And that's it on the business segment of the news. Many thanks to you for watching. have you back. On foreign news now. Nine people have been arrested in Kenya following an attack on a luxury hotel compound in the capital Nairobi that killed at least 21 people. All five militants who stormed the hotel and business complex on Tuesday have been killed, officials say, and a major hunt is on the way to find those who helped organize it. Somalia-based Islamist group Al-Shabaab says it was behind the attack. Kenya's Red Cross says everyone who was missing has now been accounted for. President Ruyu Kenyatta said on Tuesday that five jihadis carried out the attack and all were eliminated by security forces after a 19-hour siege. French Prime Minister has said a no-deal Brexit looks less and less unlikely and has launched a contingency plan to prepare for it. After the UK Parliament rejected the withdrawal agreement, the Prime Minister said laws had to be passed and millions invested in French ports and airports. The an EU official will now visit all 27 capitals to coordinate the No Deal plans. EU countries with close UK ties have already begun preparing for his departure on the 29th of March without a deal. A large explosion has killed at least five people in the Colombian capital, Bogota. This happened outside a school for police cadets in the south of the city. Images show a charred vehicle in front of the General Satanda School, which is located in a working class area of Bogota. That was the foreign segment of the news. Let's now join Akim Akitunde for some sporting stories. Welcome to the sports segment of the news. Manny Pacquiao says he will prove age is just a number when he fights as a 40-year-old for the first time against Andre Brona in Las Vegas on Saturday. The Filipino will attend his WBA World Weatherweight title against former four-weight world champion. It will be his 78th professional fight, coming some 24 years after his debut. Pacquiao, who began boxing to earn as little as $2,000 in order to help his mother feed the family, is now a senator in his homeland and cites chess and reading as factors in keeping his mind sharp for this stage of his career. And from tennis, Serena Williams sorted aside Canada Eugene Butchard in straight sets to continue her quest for a record equaling 24th Grand Slam title at the Australian Open. The American 16th seed made a rapid start on her way to a 6-2, 6-2 victory over the 2014 Wimbledon finalist. World number one Simona Halep survived the scare to beat American Sophia Kenin and reached the Australian Open third round. 
Halep. Now, one, two sets to one, three, six, three, six, seven, six, four. In the men's singles, Alexander Zverev survived a major scare as he held off Jeremy Chadi's fight back to win in five sets and reach the third round too. The German fourth seed 21-1-7-6-6-4-5-7-6-7-6-1 and will next play Australian wildcard Alex Bolt. Eighth seed Kei Nishikori of Japan also held off fight back to beat Croat Ivo Kalovic. 6-3-7-6-5-7-5-7-7-6 in a match that stretched to a final set tie break to move on. A Ghanaian undercover journalist has been shot dead while driving home after a politician called for retribution against him. Unidentified men on motorbikes shot Ahmed Hussein Swale three times in the capital Accra Local media reports say he was a member of Tiger Eye Private Investigations and had investigated corruption in Ghana Football Leagues. The undercover reports on cash gifts led to a lifetime ban for the former head of Ghana's Football Association. His body has reportedly been taken to the police hospital morgue and will be buried soon. And back home, the Chief Magistrate District Court 1 in Abuja has suspended the warrant of arrest issued previously to the Special Presidential Investigative Panel, SPIP, headed by Chief Okoi Obono Obla, against five top officials of the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF. The officials are the NFF President, Amaju Pinik, his two vice presidents, Sheya Kimumi and She Udiko, as well as Ahmed Yusuf and the General Secretary, Dr. Shanusi Mohammed. A statement from the NFF lawyers, Maman Nasru and Co., through the Football House Communications Department, stated that the court ruling ordered that status quo be maintained while a notice was served to the SPIP to answer to other fundamental and substantial issues of law put forward by the NFF officials in the matter. Former Arsenal star Emmanuel Petit feels no progress has been made at the Emirates despite the club desire to open a new chapter under a different manager. With no progress having been made, Petit says Unai Emery faces the same problems as Arsene Wenger because the club has refused to embrace revolution. With Emery seeing its hands tied in the transfer market with only loan deals available to him in January, the former midfielder, who tasted Premier League title success during his time with the Gunners, believes Arsenal continues to stagnate rather than evolve. And lastly, from the Cricket World Cricket World Cup organizers are prepared to take legal action against secondary ticketing sites with some tickets being priced over £12,000. Tickets for the England versus Australia game at Lords are being sold on Viagogo for 104 times their face value. The 2019 Cricket World Cup takes place in England and Wales from 30 May to 14 July. It is not illegal in the UK to resell tickets to international cricket matches, although the Cricket World Cup's own ticketing website states that no ticket will be offered for public sale. It's not illegal to hit you with fresh sports stories. And so, tomorrow, we'll give you more on the sports segment of the news. Trust us. Hand you back, back to Tunji for the rest of the bulletin. And you can also trust us to give you weather forecast for Friday after this time out.
write it on your heart that every day is the best day in the year. A quick look at the top stories of the news. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has released the final list of candidates for the 2019 elections. Nigeria and Brazil are collaborating to boost agriculture in Nigeria. The Central Bank of Nigeria has unveiled new policy on financial inclusion. On the foreign scene, we told you a car bomb has killed five people in Colombia. And on sports, you had gunmen have killed football bribes Ghanaian investigating journalists in Accra. That was the news. We want to thank you very much for being part of it. Good night.